Justice system. Boston law begins tonight at 10.35. Now with strong language, an uphill battle in Europe's car crime capital. Tonight, police officers in hot pursuit of car thieves who've run into a bingo hall. A drunken teenager uses a stolen car as a battering ram. Another car thief in handcuffs, thanks to a police dog named Blue. Okay, you're now under arrest. And a 15-year-old joyrider's luck runs out as he loses control. In Night Raiders, a car war special, police and criminals in Scotland do battle. Stand still, OK? OK. Charge do me. not move for breach. What he's doing, move for me. On the M74 motorway outside Glasgow, a stolen Vauxhall Astro is being driven by an 18-year-old thief with a string of car crimes to his name. The car videoing the chase is being driven by one of Scotland's top police drivers. High-speed pursuits, it's all too easy to become fixated with what's happening in front of you. It's like a game of cat and mouse, if you want to call it that. Where he's wanting to go, I'm going to try and stop him. It's a, a test of faith who's going to get my chicken out first. The thief is not only trying to outrun PC Owen, he's deliberately trying to force him off the road. Oh, yes, well done. Red mist is now an added danger. Red mist is it's a, a mental attitude. If somebody cut shot in traffic, you would love to try and get that guy across the side of the road and tear the shreds with your tongue, hopefully just your tongue. <laughs> we're trained to a high degree to recognise when we're starting to go into that sort of state, and sometimes you're allowing your passenger to say, just calm down here. And we need to think about it. The Astro is still doing 60 miles an hour, even though a front tyre has been torn to shreds. <laughs> High-speed chases in this part of Scotland aren't rare, but this one is unusual. The thief is drunk and he's been driving on three wheels for 10 miles. Most of the car thieves know that uh, if they become too dangerous, that we will pull back from the... Tango Papa 2, boy, right? Tango Papa 2, would you want any stations that's putting out Stinger, he will drive for them. He will drive for them. Tell them, caution, caution when putting Stinger... We tend to find most of the time it's the passengers in the vehicle that want the car stopped, but the driver's just going on adrenaline at that point. And nothing, I point nothing will stop him. Jeez, what's he doing? What's he doing? We are dealing with an enemy in truth, and that's the word I would use, because it, they are the enemy. It's dangerous, it's difficult. My staff are dealing with the opposition, who are out there to cause mayhem, whether to smash vehicles up, to almost kill people in the process. It's a war, because they get a kick out of it. They get a kick out of uh, smashing up a vehicle. Half a million people live in and around Glasgow. 18,000 vehicles are stolen every year, making this city one of the worst places in Britain for car crime. OK, so thanks for your time. Bye now. This is Glasgow's East End, a favourite hunting ground for the night raiders. On average, 70 cars are either stolen or broken into here every week. As part of a crackdown, the area is about to be flooded with undercover police officers. Um, one of the main aims of uh, the operation over the next three nights is not only to prevent car crime, but it's to get intelligence. So even if we're not getting people breaking into cars, what we want to know is who's walking about, who's uh, coming into the area, uh, that's not normally there. We don't just want their names, we want a full description, a uh, physical description. But tonight, and for the next two nights, what we're going to do is blitz the area with plainclothes patrols. Leading tonight's blitz are two of the East End's top crime fighters, Detective Ian McCauley and Inspector Ian Graham. 
For the next eight hours, they'll be out on the streets looking for car thieves. If you're wanting to actually catch the people who are involved in these things, then one of the ways of doing it is by being covert, being in plain clothes, be able to see what's happening without being seen. It won't stop the, the determined thief, someone who desperately needs money, whether it be for drugs, he or she will, usually he will go out and uh, break into cars anyway. Being in plain clothes gives us a bit more of a chance to uh, get a hold of them. It gives us more time to be in the area without them knowing that we're here. And the ultimate aim is, of course, to deter the crime rather than to uh, allow it to happen. Another member of the undercover squad is PC Robert McLean. He's normally a beat bobby in uniform. I prefer this side of it, I prefer the, the plain clothes side. I've got a good knowledge of the criminals in the area, and I feel that's best to be used uh, in the plain clothes aspect as opposed to the uniform aspect. You'll get folk breaking into cars uh, at least one every hour in this part. One of their vehicles out. The streets are quieter than usual tonight. Many people are tuned into a football match. Not only are the police fighting the car wars, Scotland is playing Bosnia for a place in the European Cup finals. The east end of the, the city is a, a very peculiar area. Uh, we have a very high a transient population of males who occupy hostel accommodation within the city. And at any given time, you could have uh, five to 600 people, many of whom have a criminal background, walking in the streets of what is a, a very small area. What's that? What's he got? What's he got? Working with the undercover teams will be PCs Stuart Roger and Sean Owen, and Blue. Stuart's his handler. Oh, he's my partner, yeah. 24 hours a day because he stays with me as well. Police kennels at the end of a shift, he comes home with me and stays at home. Before every shift, Owen and Roger role play with Blue to make sure he remembers how to catch car criminals. PC Owen always plays the bad guy. It's your last warning, come out or send the dog. Come Blue is a five year old German Shepherd weighing 55 kilos with a top speed of 30 miles an hour. Not to be messed with, even in fun. Blue just switches to working mode. I'm the bad guy at that point, and he'll do anything to try and get me, so uh, I've got to make sure my legs are far enough up the tree that he doesn't. Good boy, speak to him, son. Right, down out that tree. Walk in front of me. Just walk straight out there. Keep walking out. That's a good boy. Right, what have you got for my boy? Oh, what have you got? What have you got, eh? What have you got? Go get the good boy, son. Where is it? Come. They usually find when it comes to the work, it's all a big game to them. They enjoy it that much. They'll always come out and work for you, you know. How are you going in the car? A fantastic working relationship in the car. Stuart's a good neighbour. You know exactly what Stuart's going to do, and I would say that he'd know S what I was going to do. In the van. Good boy, son. Blue's one of the best dogs I've ever worked with. Oh, yes. That's it. All set. The night shift has hardly begun and already a car's been reported as stolen. Roger, attending from Saracen. Got an unmarked vehicle falling in a vehicle at high speed in the M80, so can't take a chance with something like that. Could just easily be stolen. The driver has just broken into a house and is trying to escape. It certainly sounds like a stolen vehicle. 80 mile an hour, they've been doing the 30s now. PC Owen will have to drive flat out to get to him. Blue just lies there, it's not a problem with him. He'll lie there quite calm, but once we stop the car, he knows he's there for something and he's out and he'll do it. Myself, it's just trust in Sean. I know he's a good driver. I don't have any problems with it. I know he's highly trained. This is the stolen car. The thief's making a run for it. Now it's Blue's turn. Come on, son. Fine, Blue. 
There was a saying that when we got old, we can't run, they gave us a dog, and it's probably very, very true. The Catholics aren't frightened of when we start to run behind them, but when they hear four paws and somebody panting behind them, which is usually the dog handler, then they're frightened. Come on. 90% of them, a the dog's there, they'll just freeze, they'll give up, or they'll come running out, I'm here. We've even had guys lock, locking themselves in cars after a car chase, refusing to come out because the dog's there. He's in here somewhere, mate. He came to the right. <laughs> Stuart, you got anything? Roger, last noted several Alpha Bravo and Alpha Charlie stations. On Police controllers are now sending in reinforcements. Obliged, been time. Yes, sir. Officers from the undercover operation. With no sign of the wanted man, Sean Owen is not a happy man. In the East End, DC Macaulay's undercover team is also on the move. A car has been broken into. Your vehicles are white, Peugeot 405 SRI. It's in a dark and dingy car park, a prime target for thieves. A young man is already under arrest. He's been hurt, either when he fell off his bike while trying to escape, or when he smashed the window of the car he was trying to break into. Well, apparently the fellow was found over here, and then they tried to hide something, but we had a look around, they can't find anything, so... It was also noted there was the blood on his hands, and there is blood on the inside of the car. We can uh, take swabs and uh, do a DNA match, see if it is in fact his blood that is on this vehicle. PC McLean and Inspector Graham aren't just worried about the car wars tonight. The goalkeeper seems to fill that goal. Up comes Collins, puts it in the corner! Scotland Scotland's battle with Bosnia is still going on. 1-0 to Scotland, penalty kick. So that's something good, I suppose. Against Brazil, and tonight, put it away beautifully. <laughs> Scotland won, Bosnia has to be a nil. 1-0 for Scotland. Yeah, so far. But the game's not over yet. Yeah. Reports are now coming in about a possible stolen car. Driving erratically, there may have been an accident. Stage to look out for a, a red Fiesta. <coughs> Macaulay and Graham's undercover team is the nearest to the scene. Last seen Duke Street at Aitken Street. Male driver, female passenger also on board. The driver is still in the car with the engine switched on. He has been involved in a crash. Your mother's. A car that's accident damaged and making off from an accident. You know, there's usually one or two things. It's either a drunk driver or it's a stolen car, so we're dealing with stolen cars. We've got to come and have a look at it. Well. Uh, he's up in the fumes, yeah. You've been drinking tonight, though? Yeah. No. Yeah. Right, we'll get a uniform car to speak to you. Somebody's phoned in that you're sitting here with the accident damage in the back. They're a bit concerned about you. Down there, mate. He's not came far enough along here. No. A few miles away, he sees Roger and Owen are still hunting for the runaway car thief. Blue hasn't given up, and they're sure the man is hiding somewhere in this housing estate. I'm going to walk down this side of the fence with you, bud. Oh. Find him. Find the speak. If I think there's a chance that the person's there, I'll stick at it. Come. But I hate to leave something with the thought in my mind that I could walk away. Where is he? Find him. Find him. And after putting the effort I've put in, that the person could get up out the long grass. Find this week. Ho ho, your beauty you never found us. Try the obvious ones. I don't think he's that far away again. I don't think he made it as far across as you. I think he's over there. Convinced it. Never give up. Blue helps because he's not giving up, he's continually working. Uh, he's got a scent from somewhere, but at that point he's just not 100% sure where. Uh, so he trusts the dog, let him do the hard work. We've got to keep going, got to keep going all the time. Meanwhile, uniformed officers are now arriving to help the undercover squad at the scene of the crashed, suspected stolen car. Wake him up. Right, you want to step out the vehicle, please? It's now clear the driver is either drunk, on drugs, or both. This 
Wait. It's against the law for DC Macaulay to breath test him. The law doesn't allow a plain clothes officer to do certain things in these instances, so we'll get a uniform card to deal with it. I'm we'll just keeping where he is. He certainly seems to be under the influence of something. I want you to fully inflate your lungs and give me one continuous breath. The detectives still don't know if the car's been stolen or not. Keep going, keep going, keep going. No. Have you any reason for being unable to give me a full specimen of breath? Could you do a check on the vehicle itself? Just to see if it's been stolen or anything? Right, I suspect that you're unfit to drive through either drink or drugs, OK? For that reason, you are now under arrest. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You understand you're now under arrest? OK? Yes. My own feeling is that he doesn't have permission at all to drive it, that it's somebody else's car and he doesn't have permission to drive it. That's the, that's the way I feel about it. Do you understand what's happening to you? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. Echo Mike, three zero. Go ahead, over. You ready for the details? Uh, it's, registered. it's now clear the car belongs to the man's mother. No Roger, it's, uh, but has he got permission to drive it? The last one, the Camaro, send the dog. Please, dog. Find this week. PCs Owen and Roger are giving Blue one last chance to find the car thief. Shut up, one and went half of the race. A final roll of the dice. Find them. Find your stuff on there, they could be doing a drill. Go on, find them. Find them. Where is he? Show me. Good boy, show me then. Show me. Good yes. night, sir! Yes. Ah. Weep! Stand still! Don't move! Do not move! <laughs> OK? Stay where you are. Do not attempt to run. Just stay where you are just now. OK? Stay where you are. Right, okay? let me see your hands. Still. Guys, are beautiful. Good boy, son! Right. Yes, you're beautiful. Stand up. Yeah. Stand up. Stand up. Turn round. Bring your hand into the palm of your, butt, your back. OK, you're now under arrest. You will be taken to a police office, OK? Do you understand that? We did think it was going nowhere. We thought, this guy it has to be somewhere here. He just thought, no, we've got to give this a go. And I think I carried on with the search. We blew. Sean went away to get the torches. And just as we went to get the torches, the dog indicated and found the guy in the bushes. Ah! Good boy, yes. sir! Yes! Ah! Weep! Stand still! Don't move! Engine. Do not move! <laughs> OK? And if we'd walked away, then, that person would think to himself, great, I've got away from it. Whereas, just a bit of perseverance, and there's always a chance of a result. Fantastic. Over the moon with that one. This is the dog that got the first apprehension, so... Hopefully we'll get some more out of that, you know. Yeah, dogs are very good. <laughs> I'll come again, I'll be The thief's getaway car was stolen only a short time ago. Door lock's been attempted to be done on this side, and then they've come round to the passenger side, so the car's been fairly well planked up. Wiring coming out of the car, and then when you come into the, the ignition, the vehicle, it's a classic way that they're done. They've taken a bit of time about this and they've smashed half the cowling off and leave this half intact. So if you're walking by the car, it looks OK. That's how they start the vehicle now. The drunk driver detained by the undercover squad is now at the bar, the charge bar at the local police station. Right, he now has one last chance to give a breath test. William, you're listening. These yes. officers are going to read a form out to you. William? Yes. Do you agree to fight two specimens of breath? Yes. <coughs> hey, William, you want to come with us, please? It's now three in the morning. But the night is far from over. 
and the night raiders are still at work. Traffic. We're indicating right stand by. The driver of this stolen Vauxhall has no intention of being caught tonight. Road, possibly. This is one of four and a half thousand cars stolen in Glasgow each year that are never seen again by their owners. The thief is using a school as an escape route, knowing the police will not dare follow him for long. Across football fields over. Stango Papa 2, we have lost the vehicle, we have lost the vehicle, he's gone cross country. Sometimes you've got to put your hands up and say, away you go, I'm not going to catch you this time. It uh, doesn't very often happen because of the devices we have nowadays, we can stop it before it gets to that stage. Many of the cars the police fail to stop end up like this, torched by the night raiders. They drive them to remote farmlands just a few miles from the city centre. It's the morning after the night before and officers from Strathclyde specialist car squad are already on the move, picking up the pieces. Uh, there are the are very rural. You'll see how quiet and desolate it is, and a lot of wee bike roads, labyrinth of roads up here. So once they get up here at night in the dark, they can just abandon the cars and torch them at their will. It's a really quiet road, hardly anybody uses it, and it gives them the perfect time to strip the vehicle and then take whatever parts they want, and then just set it back to the vehicle to hide any identification. You mean that burnt out vehicle? That burnt BMW. These people who steal the car come up there, they know they're safe. Because it's total, I mean, there's no street light, there's nothing, it's pitch black. A few hours ago, this car was worth £5,000. You know, it's so remote, I think there's only about half a dozen houses up in that area. OK, we'll have a look at it. It's generally the following day before we get a report that there's a burnt out wreck line. No, it says it's stamped like... The flames may have destroyed any clues about who it belonged to, but these officers are trained to find numbers and marks which survived the fire. Can somebody do is a... We'll check the chassis number from a burnout. Right, that way, they can trace the owners. Alpha. To some of these people, that is their livelihood. It's a means of getting a transport and a family about, going for a weekly shop, getting to their work every day, and suddenly have that and think, um, oh, the police have recovered, but oh, it's burnt out. Cheers, bye. The BMW is listed as stolen. It's a 318i BMW black in colour. It was stolen on the 9th of November uh, this month. Also picking up the pieces are two beat officers who are learning to become special car crime investigators. Information has come in from a, a police officer down in U Division that there's a burnt out vehicle down in a, a place called New Cumnock. Um, so we're heading out that way to see if we can find it and then try and identify the vehicle. There it is. This is the first time PCs Ellison and Clark have tried to identify a burned out car on their own. Finding a chassis number is the first challenge. PC Clark thinks he knows where it is. It's usually somewhere along here on the bulkhead. But he doesn't. It's just we can't find it. <laughs> but we have ways of finding this information out. If I didn't ask someone who knows. Hello, Alan, it's Jim. <laughs> Can you tell us where the, the stamped in number should be in a Peugeot 106? Offside front wing. Uh huh. Ah, it's yeah. it coming up. Ah, yeah, it's it coming up. Yep, yeah, smashing. Cheers. Bye. I did get it wrong. It wasn't in the bulkhead. It's there. It's coming up. So many casualties from Glasgow's car wars have burned in fields around the city that one farmer has taken to harvesting them and stacking them in his yard for the police to come and examine. What he does is he picks the vehicles in 
he picks the vehicles in and brings them here so we can come the exam and get some here in one place. Right, we've got a floor number on this Vauxhall. We've got Whiskey Oscar Lima. Sometimes Four it's uh, two or three a week. Nine. Other times it might be two or three months before there's one. It always seems to come round to this area again and again. The only things that we can find on vehicles when they're as badly damaged as this is a, a chassis VIN number which is stamped into the floor of the vehicle and possibly an engine number if it hasn't been uh, chiselled off or erased by some other means. Three is a last digit number three as well. This is not the sort of beat most police officers are happy to walk. Not something I expected I would have to do when I joined the police, but because I'm a lover of cars, I don't mind getting the wellings on and getting into fields and getting in about these cars and trying to find the stamped in chassis VIN number or the engine number on them. It's always good to recover stolen vehicles and at least get it cleared up because it'll still be an outstanding stolen vehicle. Not all stolen cars end up dumped and burned. Many are stolen for money. The criminals then sell them to unsuspecting members of the public. This Honda was stolen four months ago. The thief has changed the plates and parked it outside his home. Police officers based in this porter cabin are going to try and get it back. And as soon as we are told that in charge of the operation is Detective Sergeant Tom McCrossan, one of Strathclyde's most experienced car crime cops. Apprehension or detention and gets away. Then it's not just his job, it's his life. Okay, thanks very much, Inspector. Right, goodbye now. Major criminals make a lot of money in vehicle crime. So therefore, I saw this as an opportunity in, let's say, the swan song of my career to get involved still actively with... Uh, criminals who uh, are making a lot of money out of organised crime. OK, have you got the mobile numbers of the officers? Uh, yes, you're playing close yes, officers. Yes, I do. OK. okay. PC Davy MacDonald will be helping McCrossan. It'll be his job to stake out the building where the thief lives. It will be our uh, objective today to block that vehicle in as quickly as possible, arrest him and take it from there. We're going to an area of Glasgow known as the Gorbals. It's in the south side of Glasgow in the south. The south bank of the River Clyde, not far from the city centre. There are high-rise flats there. We're after a particular criminal who we know is involved in the thefts of cars um, and also in ringing cars. We know that there are warrants in force for this man and there's a stolen car sitting outside his house. MacDonald will stay as close to the stolen car as he can without being seen. We want to make sure that he's arrested in possession of the car. He has to be in the car with the keys, with the keys in the ignition. But once the Honda is running, the thief might get away. An undercover officer has been checking escape routes. There's about three or four different directions he could take. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, because he, the way he's parked, he's manoeuvring to get out. There's a lot of, kind of um, roadworks and stuff like that as well, so it's take him a bit to get out. There. Right, just for, for geography purposes as well, if we can just get... I drive round then, sure, that'd sure. be all right. Yeah. Is this a case of the car was the car was seen and identified? Yeah, something? yeah, uniform was seen and identified. It stolen vehicle, false plates. So that's where we have to stay. Right. The suspected car thief is also thought to be armed and dangerous. His favourite weapon is a cutthroat razor. I don't know my way around these streets very well because I don't usually work in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to drive round the outskirts of our target area. And if I have to chase them on foot and run after them, then I've got an idea of where I'm going. Uh, it's very important for, for any police officer to know his bearings and where he is and have a, a reasonably good sense of direction. Um, it could save your life. Police controllers are also monitoring another stakeout near the old Govan shipyard on the banks of the Clyde. An informant claims there's a stolen pickup truck inside this garage. 
PC Alan McLean is also with the car squad. He's keeping in touch by mobile phone. Roger Tango 015, do you have an update on the location? Do you still have a sight of the vehicle? We're outside just now. We've got to wait. There's nobody near it. Cape I. I don't see anybody about it. That's what I'm saying. It's sitting there itself. McLean wants to catch the driver actually at the wheel. And hopefully the, the driver will start the vehicle up and drive it out in the road where we'll get it stopped with a uniform station. At the Gorbals stakeout, PC McDonald is getting restless. The car thief still hasn't appeared. There's been no movement so far. Uh, we must assume that our target doesn't know we are here. And we must assume that, uh, you know, uh, the car is, there's always a chance that the car is going to move sometime soon. The important thing is that the car that belongs to to an ordinary member of the public that's worth thousands of pounds is in one piece, it's not been damaged, and we're going to be able to recover it. In Govan, the suspected stolen pickup is on the move. It's coming this way. It's coming this way. It's <laughs> now turning into St Andrews Drive. It's a white transit pickup. It's got trees in the back of it. Uh, up towards the Port Shores Road. Ferry vehicle now will be St Andrews Drive towards Port Shores Road. PC McLean wants help to stop the truck. Another police car. Tango Zulu 15, an update, please. It's now just went through the traffic lights and he's indicating right to turn in uh, by the transport museum. Yeah, to Victor Bike 11 from the Stone Car Squad. Target vehicle now at the traffic lights indicating to turn up the side of the transport museum. Just noted over. Hello, it's North and Keir Street. North and Keir Street, yep. Roger, stick to Michael Evans, I'd have over. But the help won't be needed. Oh, Stop, yeah. The driver's parking. Hello there, he's just pulled into a parking space and we're Leslie Street at Keir Street. Tango 015, just confirm his exact location of the stopover. Leslie Street, Keir Street, yeah. Yeah, it's a Fox Rock Light 1. Vehicle is now parked up. Leslie Street, Leslie Street, Keir Street. In the Gorbals, the car thief who lives in the tower block still hasn't shown. Three hours have gone by. Hello, DS McCrossan. DS McCrossan is yes. now at the scene. Yes. Yes, I can. He's worried that local criminals might uh -huh. recognise his unmarked police cars and warn the wanted man that the car squad yes. are onto him. I feel exposed in the actual area of the car park, particularly with this vehicle. So I'm going to be just running about in a roving patrol, and I'm available in this number should you need me very quickly, OK? The object of the exercise here is to arrest a, a known individual uh, in possession of that vehicle. However, if uh, our resources uh, are recognised uh, and word gets back to this particular person, then quite obviously he won't be near that vehicle. But from that point of view, it's important that we just maintain a respectable distance from the actual scene. I'm quietly confident we might get a result, although it may be some time uh, in the future. Right. Your build plate's missing as well. A mile away, PC McLean has started to examine the tree surgeon's truck. Well, See if it, it may have a false identity. The VIN plate on there is not a genuine Ford VIN plate. The number's stamped in it. It should be embossed out of the way. It's embossed on the other side. I checked that. No, it's stamped in on the other side. Well, exactly. Did you check the engine number? See down here? Right. That's where your engine number should be. Somebody's cut it off with a still saw or a grinder. That should be a flat surface which protrudes out about that much for the engine. And that's where the engine number's stamped in on these. So that, somebody's fiddled the engine on it? Somebody's took the engine number off it. They've also took the build plate off it, which is r relative to the body. The VIN plate that's on there is false. And without strapping down the step, to get a good look at the number that's stamped the step, I would imagine that this vehicle is going to be a stolen vehicle. Oh, my God, Father. So far, from what I've seen, I'm not happy. I'm very suspicious of your vehicle. It's just experience to get to know what to look for and what you can identify and what you can't. And, uh, obviously, each uh, operation that they do, your experience builds up. Uh, so it eventually gets that you can look and say, yeah, I can identify that, or no, I can't. The plate's not stamped in, the plate is stuck on. See on there? Yeah. That's a plate which is stuck onto your oh vehicle. Oh my god. That's what you've bought. 
Oh, Jesus. The correct serial number's there on the original step. Yeah. This has only been stuck on top. That would appear to be... How much did you pay for the van? £4,000. That would appear to be what you've bought for £4,000. Oh, great, eh? <laughs> I'm going to take the vehicle away and hopefully identify it. Well, uh, you what? let me get it emptied first. Uh, it's not a problem. Is it just rubbish? <laughs> no, it's the stuff in there I'm going to get. <laughs> yeah. We'll take the vehicle down to your premises. You can empty yeah. it down there. Eh? You know what it is? Team 4 to Team 3, go ahead. Roger, aware of your stand down and I'll await uh, the arrival of uh, recovery. Roger. After half a day outside the Gorbals Tower Block, the car squad have decided they can wait no longer. They're going in to snatch back the stolen Honda. There are different ways that we can catch our, our criminal. Um, we've tried one way, after four hours it didn't work, and we've decided to go a different route and we're going to try a different way of doing it. Uh, inside the car is, is where our, our crucial evidence is going to be. And if we were to find fingerprints of our suspect, perhaps on, on a mirror or on a window inside the car, then it becomes much more difficult for the criminal to explain why his fingerprints are in a stolen car. DS McCrossan hasn't yet given up hope of arresting the man they want. In my experience, you tend to find that uh, this type of individual uh, may well actually, even though it's uh, 20 past 12 in the afternoon, he may well actually still be sleeping. It's not uncommon for him to suddenly emerge and uh, carry, carry on about his particular type of activity in the, in the early afternoon. But before PC McDonald can make his move to recover the car, someone's beaten him to it. I give you a strike. Bastard it's Sergeant McCrossan. It. The what? thief has finally appeared, and McCrossan has blocked him in as he tried to drive away. Unlock Please. it now. Please, you're surrounded. Open the door. Unlock it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Show me your hands. hands now out. they need to find the razor the man is said to carry. Your hands clasped, Tom. Clasp in front of you. Clasp your hands. Stand here. Right you come. Your hands clasped. Where's the, where's the blade? In the pocket. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He's given it to the woman. Dave Crossing. Yeah. I'm a thief catcher. I've always been a thief catcher. I have never lost a day's enthusiasm in the 26 years in the police service. And it, it becomes a kind of game at the end of the day. But it's a game that, uh, fortunately, we're able to win. I dislike criminals. I dislike criminals because they abuse victims. At the tree surgeon's garage, Glasgow's newest crime victim is finding out just how painful this business is. See, I can sue the guy that sold this to me. That's if you can find them. Well, if he lives at the address he gave me. If. That's a farmer. He's uh, just spent £4,000 a while ago uh, buying a vehicle in order to carry out his business, and now the police have came and taken off him. But the vehicle that he thinks he's bought it's not the vehicle that's sitting there. He's bought another vehicle, he's bought a stolen vehicle. So, unfortunately, his business is going to suffer. And then he's also put in a position where he's got to justify himself as to having innocently purchased the vehicle. One vehicle short. Oh. Okay, one street. When the chap sold me the vehicle, I got him to, to, to sign the receipt saying that there was no third party interest in it. So, I suppose. Um, I can always sue him for it if I have to. It's not every day that you go out and you'll spend £4,000. And if you're giving £4,000 to somebody you don't know for a vehicle, you want to check that that vehicle's right. And, of course, I'm going to have to find, find, find another vehicle from somewhere and pay for it, which is uh, far from ideal. I mean, that man there, next time he goes to buy a car, I'd imagine he'll have a wee bit of a closer look and before he parts with any money. 
Yes, I bought myself a VIN plate for four grand. <laughs> no. At the police car pound, the man who had the Honda stolen by the razor thief has come to identify it. And this is your original he hasn't seen the car for four months. It was stolen after his house was burgled. The, the, the person who broke into your house took the spare key? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, they broke into the house while I was on holiday. I think as well, people don't think about hiding uh, a car key. No. And would you start the vehicle using your true key? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since he drove it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. Right. <laughs> That's perfect. The man's already had the insurance money. He doesn't want the car anymore. It's my wife's car and she won't want it back for the fact that she feels she's kind of been violated. It's somebody else has had it and she probably she wouldn't drive it again. It would, she'd just feel uneasy driving it. Nightfall brings yet more work for Glasgow's car squads. The thief driving this car is 15 years old. He stole the keys to it whilst at a party. A joyrider. The police have been chasing him for nearly an hour. A number of car thieves that I know quite openly will go out and bait police cars into taking a chase with them. Uh, and that's the dangerous ones. This time, the joyrider walked away with minor cuts and bruises. PCs Owen and Roger and their dog Blue are again on patrol tonight, on the lookout for the night raiders. But not every car that catches their attention is stolen. <laughs> this one's loaded with wooden planks. We've got an interesting load in front of us. <laughs> Couldn't believe when that came out in front of us. Oh, lordy. I'm not going to ask the obvious question. Do you know why you're being stopped? The wood, exactly. There's no way that can be put safer in the vehicle. If it hangs out the back, it's not so bad. There you go. But if it hangs out that much, I'm not worried. I've had my laugh, a wee bit of common sense, because if anybody had been coming down the side, if you had to go near the curb side, that's going to do a lot of damage to somebody. We report a vehicle now stopped, no further assistance required. Yes, yeah, standing by. But there's little time for laughter. Glasgow's main control room is getting reports of another stolen car. It's a silver Ford Escort. Vehicle lost in Lockheel Road. The vehicle, a silver Escort, registration number Delta, 241 Mike November. Sean Owen and Stuart Roger are already on the way. This part of Glasgow is another night raiders hotspot. Again, very easy pickings about right here. You can see with the lighting, it's maybe not the best. There's lots of dark areas. You take for instance that wee white car that's sitting there. How easy would it be to go to the passenger side there and work in that car? If they've been disturbed just now, they'll lie low for a while. Stuart Roger has spotted a car with a smashed window. Yes, calling Tango Papa One Tango. It's not the Silver Escort, but criminals have clearly been at work. Tango Papa One, in about ten minutes, we've came across a vehicle that's been broken into in Fern Avenue over. Roger, let's come across a code double six. Radio's with it. There's a lovely sticker saying there, stop lock. We've got lying in the back seat. There's a stop lock. It's not even been put on the vehicle. 
Tango Papa 1 calls Delta Tango. Tango Papa 1. We're in Fern Avenue in the Briggs. Uh, we've come across a 6 6 to a Volkswagen Golf. It's maybe linked up with your escort that's been tried somewhere else over. But PC Owen has seen and heard something. There's a man in the street swearing at them. Three, two, fucking five, you know. It's possible he's connected to the attempted car crime. Come here a minute. One, go ahead. But he's not waiting to talk to the officers. I believe so. talking to here. He's heading for home. Not aware of Roger, can you do a wee check on the vehicle for me, please? What's your problem as the first thing? Come here. Come here. Come here, out here. Out your fucker. Get the fucker out and get along. We're here to talk to you about your manor outside. My manor fucker, what? I was talking to your manor across the road. Shh. The veins, all right. Don't worry about it. Step out, step in a word with you. Never to speak to you. What's your problem? I don't have a problem. Why get out of my house? You get along. Well, that's all the more reason. Why get out of my house? I'm asking you to get out of my house. No. You're saying no? No, I'm here to talk to you. Now, you need to do it outside and give your wife and your own peace. I'm asking you to get out of my house. You're not asking me anything at the moment. Get the Right, OK, you're now under arrest. OK? You were given more than ample opportunity there. Sorry, man. Just just now, um, it doesn't appear serious, Landry, but we're getting an ambulance just to confirm that before we move him. Fucking stand man. still, right. OK? OK. Charge Do me. not move for breach what he's doing me for now. Breach of the peace still, unless you want to go any further. Go do me for what you want, do me for murder here, fuck. Just stand up. So, so, that's traffic. Will you stop? In North Glasgow, PCs Owen and Roger are becoming entangled in a difficult situation. You are here for a fucking stolen more. You're kicking somebody's door in. Yes, we're having to waste our time because of you. See if you kick me one more time. I never kicked you, you fucking prick. If I kicked you, you'd fucking know about it. Daddy, you're just making things worse. Okay, you fuck. He's under arrest for breach of the peace. He'll be taken to a police office. Uh... He's doing a fucking punch up. Shut up, you. The car wars are now the least of their worries. At the scene of the mysterious car crash, the driver is still in the car, refusing to move. But is he playing games? He hurt anyway. Your back. Right, we're getting an ambulance here. <clears throat> Your head. Your seat belt on. Your legs as well. He's complaining of leg and back injuries, smelling of drink, um, so we just need to wait till we get him into an ambulance and find out what's happened from there on in. I went down and spoke to him. He said he's got back and leg injuries, but I think he's at it. That's to beat, try and beat the system. First of all, unconscious, to put a few hairs out his chest. <laughs> They kick fucking doors in and car crying and frighten two fucking five year olds. You fucking pair of pits. Why wash my fucking arm? You like it. Peace. Why wash my arm? Fucking. What the fuck? Is this what I do with car crying? You just kicking the fucking yeah, door in. And you just wonder what the fuck's right. Another one. Tango Papa. The wife of Sean Owen and Stuart Rogers' prisoner has been unable to calm him down. Because of you, oh, well, the yeah, fucking door. They're waiting for a police van to come and take him away so they can return to the car wars. Can you give us the exact location, please? Fucking man, don't break my fucking arm! Ah! Ah! Stop lying! Ah! I can't leave us alone! Ah! Ah! Tango Papa, I'm going to get us a wee bit of hat. Quite a. You fucking break my arm, you prick! Fucking leave! Ah! 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 Fucking. Stop you can see there. Fucking There's no pressure put in the cuffs at all. It's I just pure. The fuck's that on my leg? I'm on your legs. They stop you kicking us again. At the crash scene, paramedics are now trying to move the man from the car. He'll be taken to hospital for a full checkup.
PCs Owen and Roger have got rid of their prisoner and are back in the car wars. Two young men have been seen acting suspiciously in a car, not far from where they are. Roger, Tango Papa 1, Tango Zulu 1-8. Tango Zulu 1-8 is actioned at it. Over. If they hurry, they might catch the thieves red-handed. A second high-speed patrol car is behind Owen and Roger, also answering the emergency call. Four, kill the sound. The car they're looking for is this one. PC Owen can see people in it. But he's turned into the wrong entrance. Fiesta there. Go, go, go. That's That's it. He's on the run. He's on the right side. The car park belongs to a bingo hall. Two youths are now running into the hall. As Owen and Roger search the hall, the second police car is on its way round the back, cutting off any possible escape route. Roger, that's noted. Two officers at the front, two officers at the rear with no update. Obliged, AS out. But Owen and Roger are sure the car thieves are still inside. Huh? White jacket. Where, where, where? Stand up, look at this. That's him. That's him, isn't it? Oh. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. What's he wearing? No one has yet run out of the back, so the youths must still be in the hall. Is that helpful, then? Now it's a wee game of cat and mouse. As you can see from everybody that we have in here, they don't want to talk to us. It could be their car that's sitting broken into outside. That's the mentality of what we're up against. Where are you going? Well, Where are you going? We're working here. You're working here? Yeah. Just go back up there just now, because I'm not letting anybody leave the building in here at the moment, OK? There's a boy ran off here. Boy ran Did anybody come back out the way? No. Yeah, take it, take it, take it, in. But PC Owen has spotted a youth sitting on his own. He could be one of the suspects. What's your name, son? What? Right. I'm going to check the videotapes. I have reason to believe that you, you're the person that ran in here. No. OK, well, we've got videotapes in the car, and we've also got, as you can see, film crews to the side of us. OK? You're not obliged to say anything. Anything you do say will be noted and maybe using them as to understand that question at the moment. I'm my grand, sir. Right. Where is your grand? Grand. She'll be outside waiting in a taxi. She'll be outside She'll waiting in a taxi, taxi, so why are you waiting in here? Right. Up oh, you come and come out with me at the moment. Okay. All right, Jacket. So I'm in my grand, so... It's just me. Me? You're sitting there. That's not no. me, sir. I'm sitting right. in my grand. That's not You're me. not obliged to say anything or anything. You do say, well, you know, to me. I'm not putting cuffs on you. I'm holding you for my own good at the moment, OK? You can check the cameras. I'm, I'm, I'm in my grand. My grand why plays on a Friday night. Why are you sweating? I sweat. Why are you out I'm of breath? Sweat. I'm not out of breath. I sweat. You are out of breath. I'm not out of breath. I sweat. Sitting reading a, a programme there. Do you have video the cameras on any of the exits and entrances? Can we check the tapes, please? Bring you outside at the moment. I'll be bring that up. i bring that one as well. Okay. You're just a suspect at the moment. You're a suspect at the moment for a break into a vehicle outside. Okay? He's why you just stay there now, boys. The police cordon outside has also paid off. A second man has been arrested by plainclothes detectives. Aye. And the boy we got the red jacket has been identified by her as well. Superb. We get statements so far and we'll get that this tied up. Yes, yeah, two Alpha Mike 10. Any update over? Only now, with both men in custody, can PC Owen search the car. Well, it's an attempt theft of motor vehicle. We've got the door locked in, and inside, they've had it started and, and rolling. One black glove line. So I need to try and find the owner of this now. 
The black glove PC Owen has found could be important. A member of the bingo hall staff has reported seeing a glove inside the building. Yeah, excellent. Better was it? Hang there. Oh. Superb, mate. One black glove in the car, one black glove across here. One glove. I think you'll find that's the neighbour of the one in the car. At last, the bingo players and staff can be allowed to leave. We've got two uh, plainclothes units standing from the rear of here. And caught one guy running through the backs who has admitted he was in the vehicle. And he has stated that the gentleman that we brought out from the bingo is the driver of the vehicle. Uh, turns out he is very well known to the local boys about here. Uh, and the vehicle was stolen four days ago from the city centre, so it's a recovery. We've got the car back, we've got two bodies. Car crime will not go away. Car crime is pervasive, car crime is hurtful. There's hardly an area of criminal activity that doesn't involve, in one way or another, a vehicle. Car crime actually goes right to the very core of people's daily living. Since the Strathclyde police declared war on car criminals, 30 fewer cars are being stolen each week. The thief with the razor got nine months in jail. The young man found by PC Owen in the bingo hall was released without charge. The drunk driver caught in the undercover operation was banned for a year and put on probation for 18 months for carrying two knives, but he hadn't stolen the car. The car thief found by Blue was given bail. He hasn't been seen since. The man caught trying to break into a car in the East End was given a formal warning by the procurator fiscal. The tree surgeon whose pickup was impounded by PC McLean got it back with a new registration number. The unconscious driver was found not to be injured at all, but he did test positive for drink and was banned from driving. The man arrested by PC Owen was not prosecuted for breach of the peace, but was found to be in breach of a drugs warrant and was fined £100. Car Wars returns to BBC One Scotland later in the year. Tomorrow night, analysing 12 months on Terence and learning from the castaways at five past nine.